What's up people? Right, so we're back. And today we're going to be talking radius arm mounting to the chassis. Yep. So let's just crack on. Right then. So we have our radius arms mounts. Yeah. So we've got four of these now. These still aren't finished because I've still got to have gussie to put in the back. And he's got to have some holes in. But we'll get to that. Right. Now, to actually get to your chassis, you're going to need some 25 by 50 three more wall box. This is what I use. You're going to need four pieces of it. Now, mine, if you're working off my measurements of my arms, these boxes, let me just put you down here are a 163 mil tall for a reason all right so what you have to do with these boxes is if you think one's going to be here gosh and another one is going to be here i mean you could just put them there like that yeah and then you'll have your one bracket's going to be on here. And then the, the other bracket will be on there. You, that's perfectly feasible. Your rear end will be a little bit narrower. As you, you won't have much poke on your wheels. So what I do with this one is this. It's shaped to the cage. Right? So once that is in place, yeah, it fits to the cage. So once it's there like that, you can hold that flat against, push that in. You know what I mean? It's in place. And I'll show you around the back. Oh. See how it moulds? Yeah? So then, that there then, is going to get fully welded all the way around, right? And it's going to have a top on it as well. We'll get that into a bit, get into that in a bit. But once this is fully welded, load of penetration in there, because it's a nice groove, that'll get linish back flat. And then our arm, instead of it being out in the middle of nowhere, can come right over and sit on that box. Yeah? So then we're going to get a full weld all the way up the side of this box. And it's going to have a full weld all the way down, tying it to the main cage. And once the top's on, the top's going to be one inch by one inch. You see? And then we can get a weld across the top. So it's going to be all welded fully all the way around. Now this thing then ain't going to go anywhere. So that's the way I've made it. I mean, there's plenty of other ways. There's, you know, if you look at some of the beam axles, these things are only this big. Now, I don't think I explained why these are so tall. Why this hole is where it is. I made this chassis to run uh, a certain floor clearance, Jesus, a certain ground clearance, right? So what I did was I got a load of schematics, hang on a sec, which is readily available online. You know, you've got all the information you can you need from heights, chassis lengths, all the dimensions you can find, right? And I thought, right, well, I want to put two and a half, three inches underneath my chassis. Three, three and a half inches, but whichever you desire. Then you need to say, right, so I want Z amount of inches under my chassis. I am running a 13 inch wheel with a 20 inch Avon slick, right? So you've got your 20 inch Avon slick. So half of that is 10 inch 
So you've got your 10 inch and then your radius arm is square. So you've got your 10 inches, then take away whatever ground clearance you want and you're left with that. Do you understand what I mean? So from there across down, there, center of your wheel radius arm, from there to the floor is 10 inch. If you want two and a half inch, three inch, five inch under here, just work your measurement out what's left. So you've got your 10 inches of wheel. If you only want to run an inch underneath your car, this hole needs to be eight and a half, nine inches up, doesn't it? You understand what I mean? So that's where I got my, my measurement from. So whatever you want, that's how I work. If you want to run 10 inch, I think a 10 inch wheel on a, a decent tire is a 19 inch tall. So they're about the same. So yeah, that's why that hole is where it is and that's why that is as tall as it is. Also, if it's short, it's more easier to flex, right? If it's tall, it's got considerably more ground clearance holding it to, to whatever. If, if you imagine, if you welded that much on, you could probably pull it off. But if you weld that much on, you ain't never pulling it off. So that's why that hole is where it is. Anyway, right, so now what we're going to do is you've seen my little bracket. Can I tell you what, I'm terrible with this camera, not So you've seen this, so I've made one that side, and I've made one this side. So I've already rocked some weld around the bottom of this one. Oh, hang on, still zoomed in. So to get this to where I want it to be exactly, very simple. You've got a square. Push it up, piece of box section, you're going to sit hard against here, against there, and then just push it into place. Yeah, square's got it. That is it. Let me have a quick show you. I don't know if you're going to see it. Sir flushes, look. Flushes a baby bump. And then this will go there. Can you see why I wanted to get everything square? Everything has to be square. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tack these in. I'm going to tack this one. You don't tack them ones in. We'll get to those ones in a bit. These middle ones, they go in after. Because what we've got to do is put this on, put this on, put a bar in with that one on it, and then that one will give us a position for that one. Because there's still some machining work to do this on this one. This one's not finished. We're going to drill it, put a bung in there, 19 mil solid steel bung. Then we'll drill and tap the bung, and that is what allows us to bolt this one. On and off, yeah, and we'll go through it together. But this this needs to be strong. So, right, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to make the top bar first. Right, we're going to make the top bar, and we'll do it together. Why not? I haven't done one for a while. What? Yeah. Right. So we're going to get our plate, and we're going to pull this in, nice and tight. Yeah, and then we're going to. Tap it down so it's right the way down and square in place. Right, so we're gonna measure the table 188. Yeah, and this one is 188. Would you believe they are both exactly 188, which is what we need. Because it's all got to run square. So right now what we've got to do is we've got to run a tape measure from this corner right there. Tell you what, bring it down a touch and see. We've got a tape measure from this corner here to that corner over there, the same. And then from this corner here on the back to that corner, that side. And that's going to give us our outside and our inside length 
of that bar. Easy. Eh, easy. What do you not think of this? Oh. I did. As you're talking to me, you're actually strapped to one of these. But it's good, because I can just stick you anywhere. I'm jibber jabbering now, aren't I? Right. Some junk out there. Get some measurements, shall we? As you can see, I've got loads of space to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the inside gap first of the box sections, right? So my inside gap of the box section is 1,133. Two. Three. 1,133. One thousand one hundred thirty-three. So, you get your notepad. Put it on here actually, right in. So we are 1,133. That's the gap between the two box sections, right? From inside to inside. Now all we have to add is the dimensions from the inside of the box in. Yeah? So I've measured now from there to the same one there. Now all I need to work out is from there to there, there to there, on all four, that should be the same. And then add it onto the length. So then what I'm gonna do, let's get my little ruler. I'm going to measure from there to the same point I got the 33 from, yeah? So we are taking in consideration wall thickness, 32 mil. So we are 32 mil on the long. And then on the shorter bit, we are, say, 20 and we can take a smidge off for the grinder. Let me just check the other side. This one's 30 mil. 20 mil. So slight difference. 20 is right, but the one's 30 mil. It's two millimeters difference. So you could have, you could do one mil either way. Do you understand? So I'll go 31 that side and 31 this side. 20. Yeah? So now we know our longest is what's that? 369 is 1,193.45. Yeah? And a 20, 40. So now we've got 1,120, 40, 50, 60, 73. Right, so now we've got our, our outside length here to the same one there is 1195 and the inside is 1133. Simple pimple. So what we're going to do, I'll tell you what, this bloody magnet. Sorry. I'm sorry for all you like. God, this man's an idiot. Right. So this is going to be our workbench here. The grinder, the grinder, the grinder, the grinder. So, turn those up, square. Can anybody do it? So, we want 1195. One, one, nine, five. On the one side. And then we're gonna flip it 180. We need to come in 20 mil this way. Don't we? Okay. Yeah, and then we need 20 mil off this way. We'll go 20 mil off here. Two, 
So there is a, yeah. So now I'm going to join them up. So we are here. So we'll scribe over it so we can see better. Yeah, and then we're going to join that up to the end. Point of point. Point of point. Jubbly jubb. Yeah. So we'll cut that. And then what I'll probably do is I'll just linish in with the grinder until we get the radius we're looking for. Right? All right, I'm going to chop that because it'll get a bit noisy.